This is the Rotowire Fantasy Football Podcast. Here's your host, John Helfen. Hey, everybody, it's John Halpin. Welcome to the Thursday, October 12th edition of the Rotowire Fantasy Football Podcast, sponsored by Fanball. Um, Tim Heaney and I are going to do an all Yankee podcast. Today. We're going to forget about football. We're just going to talk about the Yankees, right, Tim? <laughs> Sorry, guys, you have to set your lineups yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Great game. Um, blood pressure, you know, spiking game, but great game. <laughs> Totally agree. Um, the ninth inning was, even though they were winning, it was very um, tense. Uh, and everybody mm. out there loves this because everybody's a Yankee fan, right? So Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Come on. It's great. <laughs> Todd Frazier. Who knew I could grow to love Todd, grow to love Todd Frazier so quickly? Hey, he's a, he seems like a fun guy. You know, New Jersey guy, happy to be in the hometown team, I guess. Yeah, he seems like he's having fun. They are, uh, I don't know, that bullpen. Here's the thing I don't understand. And everybody after this, I will, we will stop probably <laughs> with the baseball. With the bullpen. Mm -hmm. So Robertson's, you know, the first man in, and that's fine. And he went Chapman for two innings, which I wasn't sure about, honestly. Um, Neither was I. Two inning Chapman worries me a little bit because he tends to, he labors a little when he doesn't. Because, I mean, the first, sometimes if he doesn't throw strikes, he's up close to 20 pitches after one inning, and then you got to worry. But Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, Canely's the first, Canely's the emergency guy. It's like, oh, no, something's wrong. We have to get Canely up. And I'm going, are we, are we done with Chad Green already? I, I think you might have wanted to save Green just in case of extra innings. I, I'm not sure I agree with that strategy. But, I mean, well, I was at, I was at the game Monday night, um, the game four. You saw Canely pitch in person. He with what, five of them in two innings. I don't know. I, his skills say he's just as good. And I guess Girardi's playing the hot hand. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't trust Green after that one botched, you know, thing happened on Friday. I think that, that wasn't really his fault. Right. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with Canely. I'm just surprised. I feel like all of a sudden Chad Green's on the on the out list. Maybe they, maybe he chooses one guy to rest and he's the guy. I don't know. Uh, maybe whatever. But I'll take whatever this is. I don't care. I'll take it. It's yeah, and, and that Brett Gardner at bat, man. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Oh. See, I'm now at the point, though, you know, I, I talk about my kids sometimes. My 13 year old daughter is really into this this year. All of a sudden this year, she nice. got into the Yankees. But now I'm teaching after last night, we, we watched the game. and I'm trying to teach her now that October baseball is not. Oh, hey, big game. All right. This is a commitment. <laughs> you know, this is not you, sure. know, you watch a game and then, you know, next Sunday, here's another one. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK, next week and a half of your life. But, you know, uh, <laughs> saddle up. <laughs> yes, that, 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 that's an important lesson. All right, um, everybody, we want to thank Fanball for sponsoring this Yankee slash Rotowire Fantasy Football Podcast. <laughs> Check it out now, fanball.com. Uh, if you want to talk baseball or football on Twitter, Tim's at Tim underscore Haney. I'm at Jay Halpin 37 You can also tweet us at Rotowire or get player updates, news, this and that, at Rotowire NFL. All right, buys. Don't forget your buys. Bills, Bengals, mm-hmm. Cowboys, Seahawks. So no shady. Uh, no Zeke and no Joe Mixon. If you're no waiting Dak. for him, and yeah. no Dak. Yeah, no <laughs> Dak. Um, let's go Eagles Panthers. This is this is the best game of the week. What's happening tonight? I, I think yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty sick. Yeah, it's so uh, Fletcher Cox back. Yeah, uh, right tackle Lane Johnson out for the Eagles, which is not great. Um, their line's pretty good though. Do you, do you think? Could you play? It sounds like Smallwood. Smallwood's going to not play again. I think. Doesn't yeah, look good. it says questionable, but likely coming down to game time decision. Ugh, I don't want to play anybody. I don't. I would rather play Blunt than Smallwood. You know, Clement, depending on how you have to go with your running backs here. Um. Do Do you think? I mean, can, I, I don't think the the Eagles can run on these guys. I mean, I don't think Blunt. Blunt's a guy. I do. I don't. I don't want any part of. Yeah, I don't think the matchup's great. Um, you know, they, they're pretty stout in the middle, the Panthers. And yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's one of those defensive lines that can really kind of throw around. But, you know, this, this Eagles line, you know, maybe except for right tackle, pretty darn good. Um, flex blunt, nothing more, I think. <laughs> you right. got to kind of you have to temper it. Um, Ed, Ed, are you on the Ed Dixon train? I'm not totally. I, I actually, I thought all along he was playable. But last week was kind of a weird, it was a completely fluky, weird situation where they had a couple of plays where the, the Panthers, as I was saying on Monday to Derek, there's, it's, it's all about, you know, trickery. 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Ed Dixon, you know, he looked, Cam looked out and he was like, oh, no one's within 15 yards of Ed Dixon. Awesome. Right. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like the Fozzie Whitaker touchdown, like you mentioned. Right. Um, like they were going to McCaffrey. Everybody swarmed there. And no one was on was on uh, Whitaker, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, you got some tight ends on by, I guess maybe that keeps Dixon in the conversation. He's actually ranked as a top ten on our value meter. I think that's okay. I don't know if I agree with it being that high. So, you know, the Eagles against tight ends. You know, it's very interesting because their safeties are not bad. Um, Keekley's great in coverage. Uh, sorry, um, anyway, it's the wrong way anyway. So never mind there. Um, <laughs> wrong, yeah, wrong team. I, I got you. Um, so the Eagles linebackers are actually terrible, so okay. I can agree with that. So. All right. Um, <laughs> other side here, McCaffrey. I, people keep asking me about McCaffrey. And I just – in mm-hmm. a standard, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't really want to play him that badly. And if PPR, obviously you want to. But you know, I don't know how many – I mean, he's. Got, I feel like he's going to run the ball four times and catch five passes for 55 yards. And if he doesn't get a touchdown in a standard, it's pretty – it's, it's yeah. kind of uninspiring. Yeah, but if he gets that second level against Philly, that's very very encouraging. Um, but yeah, you know, standard. It's Jonathan Stewart's hogging all the the work, and what did he have like one point something yards per carry last week? You it was know? terrible. It was eighteen yeah. for twenty one. I think it was so bad. Yeah. And Fletcher Cox being back doesn't make me um, optimistic about Jace too. So. Right. Um, <laughs> the outside guys. I mean, uh, Funches and Funches and Benjamin both playable. I've got them both. Yes, top twenty five. Yep. Sounds right. Because those cornerbacks are awful on the outside. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they didn't get they got the one guy. What Darby got hurt early. Yeah. Right. So that, that did not help them. I mean, their their defense is still pretty good, but but they're vulnerable that way. Um, does is Wentz is Wentz a guy you're looking to bench tonight? If you can. I mean, everything's context related, like you always yeah. say, but what do you think? I'd have to have a really good quarterback. I think um, I do think the Panthers secondary can be tested. You know, they, they've they've had a favorable schedule early on in the year that kind of you know bolstered them maybe a little artificially. Sorry to say to the to the Panthers fan here, um, <laughs> but you know it's I, it's I think he's top ten, especially with the buys this week. I have him thirteenth. The two yeah. the guys the All guys right. I have ahead of him who would be the the questionable types are. I don't know if Smith's questionable anymore. Um, Rivers and Palmer. Okay. Um, I think Stafford last week, you know, that, that Lions offense, not really the, the biggest passing weapon anymore. I think the Eagles are going to be a little bit more of a test for them. Okay. So I'll say that. That's fair. All right. Um, Bears, Ravens. Oof. This is mm. going to be, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I have the Ravens. The, the Ravens are my number one defense. Yeah, probably. There's a lot of great defense options, by the way. Yes, yes, there are because the bad matchups. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but the Ray, I mean, this is just a nightmare situation for Trubisky to go into. Yeah, I think so. I mean, part of me thinks like, okay, maybe there's a the Bortles surprise situation here because you know Trubisky at least if nothing else seems to be somewhat careful with the ball. He can move a little bit, but yeah, I, I don't see that happening here. Um, you know, rookie being tossed in like this um, still has to run for his life a bit. You know, that's a good pass rush still. Um, no talent to to stretch the field. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I think <laughs> it's, it's just terrible for him. It's terrible. The, the one guy I wanted to talk about there is Zach Miller because right. um, I mean, he's got to throw someone and, and you know, I mean, we say that a lot. It's an easy, it's a cliche and, and overused one by me, probably more than anyone, but <laughs> Zach Miller, seven targets in Trubisky's first game. Now it's only one game, but that's encouraging because as you said, there's no, there's no perimeter targets to speak of mm-hmm. and Zach Miller getting seven targets from Trubisky in, in, in his first start says to me that, you know, uh, I, I think it's it, more likely than not, we're going to see something like that again. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I hate to commit to that, you know, that position one, where you play one and then it's someone as risky as Miller. Uh, you really need to have a, a dearth of, of options there to really consider him. Um, yeah, but you're right. He, he did look his way, even though the touchdown was a tip into a touchdown, um, right. it still counts as a, as a red zone look, I guess. So, I mean, um, if I, yeah. I Graham or Witten or something like that, Miller's a guy I'm, I'm fine going to. Yes. Okay. There you go. Context matters. Yeah. Hashtag it, context matters. And who's the other, and Clay being out now, even he went right. out early last week, right? Early last yeah, week. He was, he was pretty early. Yeah. Um, so. Ravens, uh, this backfield, um, Terrence mm. West, we're not sure about yet. Didn't practice Wednesday, I think. So now we're back to Alex Collins. Alex Collins ran okay, 
And last week he didn't fumble, right, for a change, which is nice. Right. <laughs> um, but Allen got more work than he did. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, is, is Alex Collins a guy? I mean, so he got 12 weird. carries. Even with, even with Allen getting more work, Alex Collins got 12 carries. Yeah, I think I think West injury kind of helped that a little bit. Um, you know, Allen's the PPR guy. Um, will they need that against the Bears? I can see that. I can see them just playing that matchup better. You know, trying to trying to get the pass out of the backfield a bit more. Um, but you know, I don't know. Collins Collins is you know the, the the I think he's the main carrier. I don't know. I, I think the situation was just weird, kind of weird last week with Baltimore. So yeah, I, I would do non PPR. I think I'd probably favor Collins a bit in PPR. I would just favor Allen a bit more. I don't know. I mean, even though. I mean, that game last week was it was was not that. I mean, the, the, we thought the Ravens were going to win. It wasn't a blowout, right? Right. But um, but Allen, I mean, twenty one carries. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know what to what to I, make. I don't th- Every week, that's not going to happen, though. I, I don't want to bank on that. So, All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's the confusing part. It would have said to me that, I mean, Harbaugh talked last week about Collins' leash being short with the fumbling. Mm. And and what I thought, if West, with West hurt, I looked at that and I thought, okay, Collins gets to work. And if he fumbles, then, you know, I mean, see you later. Mm-hmm. But then Allen still got more work than he did. So I don't know. I don't mm. think I want – I don't know if I it's, want Collins. It's a tough backfield. It should be a blowout. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's definitely, you know, not the ideal situation to try to pick from this backfield. I mean, you know, the Raiders game, I was just so weird. I, I think that Allen seemed like the better matchup against the Raiders uh, instead of instead of Collins. I, I think it's because a little bit more short area work he, can, he, he was able to work with. And Collins maybe needs a bit more flow to get going. And I don't know. Um, I, I don't like either one. Either I think both are just flex to me either way. So. I don't know if, if you're losing Zeke or, or whatever, like we said before, it's you have to consider it a bit harder, I guess. I have Allen inside my top 20. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe okay. I'm, maybe my, maybe I'm getting the whiplash of recency bias stuff. Well, I, I think he's the more productive one because he's he is the, the pass option. So, right. OK. Yeah. Um, Browns, Texans. All right. Mm-hmm. And I talked to Derek on Monday. I haven't talked to you about this. Mm-hmm. Sunday night after Sunday night. Deshaun Watson obviously had a huge fantasy game. Mm-hmm. And you watch him and you and you see the possibilities. I mean, we've been talking about this for a few weeks. So, you know, the running makes him at, right right after that Bengals game it was OK. This this is there's fantasy viability here. I didn't mm-hmm. think he played that great on Sunday night. Oh, uh, you know, the Chiefs front seven does disrupt a lot of people. And, you know, even though they're secondaries without Eric Berry, which, you know, I made a point of saying that might be a decent matchup for like secondary receivers. Yeah. Uh, as as Will Fuller also proved, even with DeAndre Hopkins being a stud fantasy wise. Um I don't know. They can get to quarterbacks like that. I mean, there's the Houston Texans line is nothing special. Right. Um, so, you know, Cleveland, you know, Miles Garrett could be more of a factor than than most people think. I mean, that defensive line is actually not terrible for the Browns. Um, yeah. I mean, garbage time. He It's garbage time for Houston at this point is going to be on defense probably because, you know, they'll probably have a lead on Cleveland early. Right. But then again, that Houston defense, you know, they lost they lost so much talent with Wad and Merciless and uh, and Cushing. I don't know. It might be closer than people think. Um, I'm I'm still confident that Watson's a top ten quarterback this week. I am too. I mean, I, I mean, fantasy yeah. wise, yes. I just felt like everybody was raving about him. Went, oh no, he's a, he's a superstar. How did we not see this? I'm like, well, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he basically the the extent the the ability to extend plays is terrific. Yes. But what he did was he basically he got, he got away from a couple of times he got away from sacks and he went ah, I'm just going to chuck it 50 yards and see what happens. <laughs> and it was garbage time again. Right. So and it's fine. Know. I'm not yeah. complaining about the guy. It was just I, I felt like all of a sudden he was a pro bowler after Sunday night. And I don't know. He's um, he's fun to watch. We know this. So. Yeah. Oh. Um, the other guy you mentioned Will Fuller. Folks, I, stop asking me about Will Fuller so much. <laughs> this is everybody. You know, oh, should I trade? You know, Will Fuller or this? You know, this. You know, top 15 running back for Will Fuller because he's got three touchdowns in two games. Come on. I mean, the target it, the targets are not they're not there. Four touchdowns in two games. Sorry. Four touchdowns. I was just going to say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is RP. Am I am, am I being too under impressed with Will Fuller? No, um, he's a wide receiver three because the targets aren't always there. Big plays. He counts on them, relies on them and touchdowns. You don't want to trade for low volume, you know, high risk, high reward volatility like that with a, with a, with a stable, with a steady running back. So, you know, if you missed out in these, these two weeks, you know, kind of have to deal with that. And 
I don't think there's enough security to trade a high name like that for him. I mean, as, as good as he is, as, as he's helped my, a couple of my teams a lot with wide receiver depth. Um, but you know, he's not a centerpiece. He's he's a he's a high risk, high reward guy that that can really carry you some weeks, and and he hasn't had the disappointment just yet. So right. I mean, there, there's going to be a there's going to be a one for eight week here soon. Yep. With Will Fuller, I, I just I'm wouldn't be counting fearing on him. It. I, I'm he, fearing it. He's not yeah. the kind of guy I like to play, as we've talked about. You know, he's well, he's Deshaun yeah. Jackson light, probably. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, that, that's exactly it. I mean, standard leagues, you got to have to roll with it because the, the artist potential is so huge. But, you know. All right, other side of this one, um, uh. <laughs> there's not much going on. They The Texans have been giving up rushing yards, which the, mm-hmm. the Crow got. I, I, look, I'm not – you should not put all your eggs in this basket, but I think I think Crowell's playable. I do too. Um, maybe more so than the Baltimore backs, which is odd. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, Duke Johnson is not affecting Crowell, I think. Right. I mean, the, the separate roles still. Um, yeah, it's a good week to roll with Crowell because, like you said, the running backs, you know, we're missing this week are, are kind of big. So, do you think, are, are you on the uh, Ricardo Lewis bandwagon? <sighs> it's going to be a different week. It's going to be a different target. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hogan, I don't know. It seemed like Hogan, I, I, I saw a tweet and I wish I could attribute it to the proper person that when Hogan came in, he started throwing to him a lot more. All right. Well, yeah, it's, it's one, one sample. Sure. Um, maybe th- there's, there's the theory that, you know, they thought of their guys, they practice with more, right. um, that that's possible. I don't know. I mean, David and joke was intriguing, but you know, do you want to start him when he, have, you know, he's probably top 15 tight end just because his, his snap counts aren't going to be that big. It, it's hard to trust anybody in that Browns pass catching group. Yeah. I'm, that, I'm not that's a, agreed. Tr- trust is is an absolute. I mean, none of these guys. These, some of these guys are. Hey, if I'm hunting for somebody, but right? I'll give you an, an example. I have a league. Uh, it's a twelve teamer, where I, my team's really good, but I have AJ Green and Dez on a buy, mm-hmm. and I'm so yeah. I scrambled and and I picked him up and I'm playing him because all right, like, sure. All right, for this week, I got to do it, and I have him as probably a top forty wide receiver, which is not horrible. No, this might be an odd good week for Kevin for Hogan because you know he seems to be at least at least a little bit safer, and the Texans, like I said, don't have a pass pass rush, so that's that that he could have a lot of time to throw today. All right, this weekend, um, yeah. Packers Vikes uh, looks like Keenum again. Mm-hmm. Um, Bradford didn't practice Wednesday, and he looked like he had you know was ready for leg amputation on Monday night. Oh Jesus! Yeah. So it was just bad. He just you looked at him like no, mm-hmm. that's not right. Because <laughs> you were excited during the day. Hey, Bradford's back. Maybe not. No. The receivers, are st- I mean, they still are what they are. You're starting them both on the Vikings. Against that Packers cornerback? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Packers' second be- you know, defensive backfield has been sloppy all year. Um, yeah, you got to start Diggs and Thielen. They're both top 25 guys to me, I think. McKinnon. Where are you on, Mc- on Team McKinnon? Um, RB2. Just because yeah. of the buys this week? Um, I would 20th. Yeah. All right. There you go. So ahead of ahead of the Browns and Blunt and guys like that. Drops off at the bye week, folks, let yep. me tell you. Uh, okay. So, McKin- yeah, we're, we're good on McKinney. Mean, he, well, he had, you know, I mean, it was a huge snap edge over Murray. Two-thirds to one-third right. pretty much. Um, yeah. All right. The other way, let's see. Ty Montgomery doesn't look good for now. Um, I mean, Aaron Jones, after after what you saw Sunday, I mean, you oh. especially as a Cowboy fan, you had to be miserable watching that. That guy, that well, guy I, I great. Had, yeah. Well, I handcuffed Montgomery in the only um, actual transaction league I have. I backed him up with Aaron Jones last week. Nice. Okay. So I was I was very happy, but it's going to be very confusing heading forward, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. And the um, receivers, you know, it is what it is. You're playing all the Packers. Any Packer receiver you have, any of the top three you're playing. Yeah. Yeah, the Jordy Rhodes matchup worries me a bit, though. I don't. It should, but I mean, you know, yeah. that's that's one of those. Well, what are, what are you going to do about it? Really, right? It's you have to play Jordy. Right, you do either way. Um, all right. The tight ends in that game. Who do you like better? If you had to pick one of these tight ends, who do you like better? Uh, I think Rudolph. I think Bennett's going to have to stand in pass protect a lot more. I mean, that was kind of the case with this offensive line these last the first few weeks. I mean, they faced some pass rushes that were they needed him to stay in, and you know, this Vikings front is pretty darn good um right you know everson griffin i think is going to be a pest um so yeah ben is probably have to stay in again to help the tackles um i, I don't know are, are they look at the injury report are they back fully because the you know they, they i don't I, I don't have the injury report on tackles today um yeah I mean, I'm I know last week they were getting healthier 
Bulaga, I think Bulaga came back. I forget which one came back. Back to back to Yari came back. Okay, but uh, all right. So maybe that might change things. If those tackles are active, I might like Bennett a bit more. Um, but I'm going to go with Rudolph just to be a little safer for now. Okay. Um, yeah. Got it. All right. Lions Saints. Hmm. <sighs> Um, Mark Ingram owner's got to be high. I, I, either either back for the Saints. Alvin mm-hmm. Kamara, this is a huge – this trade for Peterson getting shipped out of there was a nice vote of confidence for the – let's say the, for the fantasy owners of Kamara because he had that good game. He caught 10 passes in London. And he – I mean, he, he's ready to get – I mean, I think Ingram's fine. Ingram's snap count's been mm-hmm. trending up. If you own Ingram, you, you, I think you're out of the woods on Ingram having to worry about him. Yeah, um, I think they can coexist with just the two of them now. Right. So, and Kamara was—I mean, he, he's going to get his share, even as a sidekick. He's going to get his share. It's going to hurt Fleener, Sneed more right. than um, than than Ingram because I think you know Kamara is just a, a fun weapon, like you said, the Reggie Bush, but he can actually run and stuff, <laughs> right? Like like a running back, it's great. <laughs> Man, so. every, everybody wants to start Willie Sneed too this week. By the way, uh, I, I, I hey, like. Oh, should I start Willie Sneed or this guy? I'm like, why is everybody excited about Willie Sneed? I like Sneed, but it's just, you know, it's crowded again. You know, yeah. it's just, it's going to be that. Uh, who's Darius Slay going to guard? That's what I want to know. I um, don't know. I, I mean, I think, I think he'll follow Thomas per, for a pretty decent portion. Right. Um, and, and people follows, might get that. That's Slay's that he follows? He, I think he's majority follow. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, I, I got, you know, we should get, I got to get better on this uh, more um, <laughs> with, with the do. following stuff. But I, I think Slay, I think Slay's like not really a follower. I, I, you know, I see that he didn't follow Beckham all the time earlier in the year. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I still want to play Thomas. I think the, the target volume still will be there for him. Okay. Um, yeah. Other side, if the Saints are vulnerable, if you still if you still think the Saints are vulnerable through the air, where you got I me? Mean, Tate, <sighs> Tate's the eye. Tate Tate gets the targets, but it's, he's a different kind of guy than than marvin right um i don't know if the saints defense is the pushover it used to be yeah i'm gonna be one of those guys and just kind of go against the grain a bit um and, and plus matthew stafford banged up um it, this is not really a high high octane passing offense anymore they want to like they want to run the ball a bit more um i don't know i i think well it depends on who marshawn Lattimore is also guarded because he's been excellent he might be on marvin jones um well, depending on the kenny galladay status as well um Right. I yeah, I think Tate's the guy, um, just because you know, matching up, you know, now that they're using Kenny Vaccaro as a slot corner, right? That's kind of that's kind of interesting. Um, I think Tate can really take advantage of that. So yeah, it's weird. I'm not I'm not as well stack against the Saints as I used to be. Right. Different type of defense now. Okay, um, everybody. Most of you tried daily fantasy sports games, and we know how it went. You had fun playing, you loved it, and you lost and lost and lost some more. And, you know, the people who invest lots of money and lots of entries, they crushed you. So maybe you quit playing. Playing Daily Fantasy is supposed to be fun. It's just a continually losing isn't. But we're here to tell you about a whole new approach to Daily Fantasy Sports, the Fanball number at Fanball.com. Here's the Fanball difference. Your Fanball number identifies your skill level. It ensures that you play in contests against players at your skill level. Let's say your Fanball number is 35. You're not going to play against people rated in the 80s and 90s because those experts have their own contests. At Fanball.com, every player has a Fanball number and every contest has a Fanball number. So you can find a contest rated around that 35 and know that it'll have players in it just like you. They've leveled the playing field with the Fanball number at Fanball.com. Have more fun and a better chance to win. Fanball.com. All right, next up, Dolphins, Falcons. Uh, Devontae Parker's iffy. We're not sure what he's going to do. How, how is this game not a blowout? I, I, I'd be very shocked if it wasn't. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's predictable. And sometimes you look at the NFL, and you go, oh, it's, it looks too easy. <laughs> but the Dolphins offense is so bad. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like the Falcons might be getting Beasley back for the pass rush. So exactly. He returned to practice. That's Jay Cutler, you know, deer in headlights yeah. <laughs> coming. Um, you know, hopefully Julio Jones's hip, you know, gets it seems like he's on track, though. So, right. He seems like he's on track. Sanu's not. It looks like yeah, Sanu's going to miss. Taylor Gabriel, interesting, sneaky option, right. I think, maybe. Yep, I, I agree. Um, even more Austin Hooper, dare we say. He, he played well last game. He finally yeah. snapped out of it a little bit. Yeah, they finally, you know, realized that he's a serviceable target. So, um, What about J.H.I. in this game? <sighs> I mean, it's, it, it's one of those weird things that it, it's so – it's another one. It's sort of cliche. Well, start your studs. you got to play him. I mean, mm. right? He got – I mean, 25 carries last week. He didn't do much with them, but with that kind of volume, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to imagine you can get a running back 
<laughs> two running backs better than him. Yeah, at this point, and like you said, with the buys, yeah, I mean, top top twenty ish, top fifteen running back for sure. You know, not not what you drafted him to be, but I think he has to kind of has to accept it at this point. That 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 run that run protection is awful. I mean, yeah, it, that's it's not a great line to run behind. Um, yeah, it's not going to be a great game for the receiver, so they might just try to swing out to Ajayi a bit more. Um, that's that's maybe that maybe that's you know heavy volume game for him, even if he doesn't do much. So is uh, I don't know. how flexy is Tevin Coleman for you in this game? Uh, quite actually, um, he's 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 flexy. You know, um, you know, most times he's like a top thirty. I think that, that that that's probably a little more strong with this week. Um, might be it's a game where they they let Coleman kind of run things down at the end. So right, he's uh, twenty four for me. Yeah. So um, okay. yeah, it's I mean, you're looking at he's going to get 10, 12 touches. He's he's not a bad out. Like I I like him more than I like say Blunt tonight. Yeah, I think I'll go with that. I like him more than yeah. McCaffrey too. Yeah. Imagine if Coleman were like the lead back. Oh. I, mean, I know. I mean, I thought he was when they drafted him. <laughs> I thought he was going to be really good. I said, that's the guy. It's funny. When they drafted him, they, Freeman had been there for one season. Mm-hmm. And Freeman was basically the pass catcher that first mm-hmm. season. I don't remember who he was teaming up with. But I remember yeah. them drafting Coleman. And I kind of went, oh, so Coleman will be sort of the, you know, more of the work guy. And Freeman will be the third down back. <laughs> Shows how smart I am. Well, and then everybody, everybody realized, oh, Freeman's actually perfect for the system. So. Yes, he's yeah. terrific. Right. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, patch jets. Okay. Um, mm. point spread still nine and a half. Are we still nine and a half on this one? Um, uh, I, I it's nine it and a half a, Patriots a implied point total 28.5. Mm. I, I don't want to, and I know we're getting away from fantasy a little. I, I, obviously the jets are a mirage. Their record is a mirage. They've beaten bad teams. They're not as bad as we thought. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, but but I'm looking at this going. I don't want to lay these points. Divisional game, Jets play them tough a lot, even despite the butt fumble. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's not division games. Like I'm I'm wary on laying the wood, as Chrysalis would say, yeah. like that. So so what does um, that mean though? Does that mean the Jets hold the Patriots in check with on, on, and keep them off the scoreboard a little more, or does that mean the Jets score more? I want to say the Jets score more against the against the pass defense has really been awful. Um, Josh McCown can go deep. I mean, he's not incompetent when it comes to that. You know, our boy ASF might be heavily involved. Yeah, baby. Um, Jermaine Kirsch seems to be like he's a decent play. Um, you know, I mean, is Blau Powell going to play? That's the key. Sounds um, like no. Wednesday did not practice. It sounds like Forte was back. Yeah. Um, McGuire's still... McGuire's in the mix to play this week. He's like a yeah. legit. You should think about it if you have him. Well, I'm, I'm activating him in my dynasty league, so for nice. sure. I have him in the uh, Adenu that we started. Did you do one of those? I did one. I did not do one this year. Yeah. I did. I used to do it for baseball. It was fun. Yeah, they, they did. Um, I, I know they, they they sponsored the podcast a little bit in the preseason, mm-hmm. and they invited me into one, and I kind of, I okay, and now you know, I'm all over it. I placed a crazy <laughs> bid on Jack McKinnon yesterday. Nice. Um, which is good. It's one of those bid things where you wind up being the a dollar over the second highest bid. What do they call that? Uh, Vickery. Yeah. yeah. That. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I got him for better than I, cause I just basically threw all my money at him. Yeah. So. It's good to manipulate that system when it's in there. So. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so yeah, I have McGuire in there and I'm totally, I'm fine with that. I think you have to roll with them. Absolutely. Yep. Um, for, so Forte might be back. I mean, basically this is a start your Patriot. I, I can't, there's not a Patriot, <laughs> Other than a you know a guy like Deion Lewis that you can consider sitting out here. Yeah, I mean Deion Lewis like in deep leagues maybe like a like a fifteen teamer or something NFFC whatever you want to do. But um, yeah, I think you kind of have to roll everybody. Brady's shoulder seems like a non issue. Right, it's just a you know non throwing shoulder. It, it might be an issue when he's trying to protect the ball, or run with it, whatever. Maybe it'll bug him a bit, but yeah, nothing. Um, I have Gillisley at nineteen at running back. So okay, um, just yeah. on the he could fall into the end zone in this one kind of situation. Yeah, and He's you know, the, right. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of his role, and you know, the, the the Jets' run defense is, you know, not as awesome as it used to be by any means. So. Right. All right, Niners Redskins. Um, looks like no Rob Kelly. So, I mean, Chris Thompson owners are happy with that, mm-hmm. but the other one of that, I'm trying, I'm looking at rushing defense stats. 
49ers, not bad, right? Hold, please. Let me find. Yeah, the, they're more bad against the pass. 4.2 per carry, middle of the league total. Um, yeah. But P, P Ryan's going to get 15 plus carries in this game. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, and another another garbage time running it down right. role, I think. But but so. he's, I mean, that, that makes him legit. As, as unproductive as he's been, if he's going to get the ball 15, maybe, tw- I mean, he could get 20 times because he has already, right? He's gotten close to that. Yeah, and, and he's been unproductive with like 20 carry workloads. So he's like 20 for 60 or something like that or really bad. But yeah, carries count this week. For buys, so is um is Terrell Pryor going to get back on the horse here? Coming off the buy, I think there's going to be some new stuff. I think he's going to he's I think they're going to roll through. I'm actually I might be stacking Cousins and Pryor and some DFS. So nice, I like that. <laughs> oh so, yeah, yeah. Niners pass actually Niners pass defense another one not so bad. It's it's well no well the, their player ratings are awful. Um, you know Rashad Robinson seems to be the guy to be picked on, and I think Pryor I I, I like Pryor this week a lot. I think he's probably my top fifteen. Okay, got it. That's that's yeah. that's bold. So okay, that's yeah. good. that's good to hear. Um, all right. Otherwise, I mean, Garcon's pretty solid. No Josh Norman, so Garcon's pretty solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Carlos, I think, does that high yeah. breed a thing? How much does that worry you? A little bit. Um, not for rational reasons, because I think you know. I mean, Hyde's been okay when it's been a non-passing situation. I think Breda's pass protection has been much better. So I think situations where the Niners are going to be in a lot of a lot of the time, we're going to be you know trying to catch up. That might be you know that might be <laughs> going to the backup there. I, I actually handcuffed Hyde and Breda in a league, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm it's going to be like the the Jones Montgomery situation. I'll be very mad about it in the near future. I think <laughs> you're always going to pick the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, it's a game. It's a game flow decision. It's got to be when you, if you're going to do that. So it is. Yeah. If you're in one of the, uh, we talked about the buys where we've got yep. Dak and Russell Wilson off. Mm-hmm. Is Hoyer a little kind of a sneaky maybe for you? Yeah, well, no, Josh Norman. That's that's a huge exposure. Um, yeah, I I think he's I think he's ranked towards the bottom of the top twenty on our value meter for Jeff Erickson. I think I'd rank him a little higher than that. Um, I got him sixteen. Yeah, that, that's more about where I would put him. I think. Um, yeah, you know Hoyer can go, you know, chunk volume. So I think it's going to be one of those cases where it's going to happen. Right. So, um, otherwise, let's see. I, the one guy, other guy, I want to talk about. Kittle was good last week. I don't know if you want to count on him mm-hmm. for the Niners. The, the guy, Jordan Reed. Yeah. You know, it's so easy <laughs> for us to give up on people, and I, I can't say that we should. Counting on Jordan Reed's a difficult proposition right now, certainly. He's one of the most untrustworthy fantasy people you could come across. Other players, you know they're not good. Jordan Reed, you, he might be great and he might not be. Mm-hmm. But he's had the bye. He's probably as healthy as he's been all yeah. year coming into this one. And we know Cousins loves throwing to him. Yeah. Maybe I'll add Reed to that stack later. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, not on the injury report. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, all, all the people who kind of wrote him off for dead, this this might be if if not this week, then I don't know when. <laughs> if I didn't try if I didn't already own him in like four leagues, I probably would try to buy low in the other ones. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, Bucks Cardinals, uh, the Bucks it looks like the Bucks are going to get some of their defensive players back, which is a huge deal for them because mm-hmm. they've been just decimated. Um, yeah, I, yeah, for sure. So. The other, I mean, going on the road, uh, I mean, the Bucks. It, Bucks are a weird team because you're playing, I mean, you're obviously rolling with Jameis, if you have mm-hmm. him, Evans, obviously, um, even even, even facing Peterson. Yes. I think you kind of have to. Doug Martin, like, you have to after last week. Yeah, yeah. Um, Deshaun Jackson, how do you feel about him in this one? Uh, well, typical week to week. Love the Love the cornerback matchup. Right. Um, with Justin Bethel, if he's not facing Peterson, I think Jackson Jackson connects on one big this week. So, okay. yeah. Um, other another one I want to mention there, Cameron Brait. Last mm. two weeks, six targets in week four, nine targets in week five. So mm-hmm. you know, pay attention. That that's another one with guys off. You've got some. He he's he's absolutely in play right now. Yeah, uh, he's still number one. I mean, as much as Howard's, you know, carving into things now, it's, you know, I didn't expect Howard to, to, to carve in this quickly. So, you know, props to him on that for being a good football player. Uh, yes, um, his run blocking is excellent. So, right. you know, he'll be in those plays. But yeah, I mean, Bray, they love having just Bray free to do whatever. 
Absolutely. You know, he's, so, yeah. Um, what about Peterson? He's already at top of the depth chart <laughs> for the Cardinals. I, I mean, the thing is, I, I think he's m- m- the most likely scenario is that he's done. But mm. he's the early down back. I mean, he's got a Does, role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, it's, he's, he's already played for one or two bad offensive lines the last few years. Now he plays for probably the worst that he's played for ever. Yeah. Um, does one help the other? You know, Peterson needs a good, good blocking tan, you know, quintet to really, in th- you know, really step up. I, I don't think this affects Ellington's role at all because they'll still be chucking it. Um, I don't know. It's I'm not. I mean, you, you grab him because of the opportunity, but you know, you don't really feel good about about playing him most of the time. And like you said, the Bucks are getting David back and all that. It's just I don't know. And right. Alexander, it's, it's it's not a good setup this week for him. It's not a good setup. I mean, but if you're, it's one of those, if you're desperate, I think, I think I agree. Right. I am at 34th at running back. So, okay. Yeah. That's, you know, it's, it's a man. I'd rather not do this. Yeah. Kind of situation. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy where I own Peterson in the, in, in the, um, in the fishbowl qualifier as a, you know, if you can go off one week and help me, I'm fine with it. But you right. know, if I had to make that, that decision every week with a weekly lineup transaction, I would not like that. <laughs> Um, on the other side, the, the Cardinals, I was, I was all over Jerron Brown last week and that didn't work. And not, he's, he's losing, mm-hmm. he's losing time. Right yeah. Now. He's losing it John, to, I mean, uh, John Brown's back healthy for now and for now. Nelson was healthy and, and it, it hurt Jerron Brown last week. Yeah. It's, it's just, you know, besides Fitzgerald, it's a weekly gamble depending on the matchups here. Um, you know, who is, who is Brent Grimes to be going up against? I mean, that's the question. I mean, Fitzgerald in the slot's a great play. You know, you roll him out. Right. Um, you know, John Brown might be the outside guy going against Grimes. So maybe it's a Jerron Brown, J.J. Nelson type of deal here. It's, you know, it's it. I hate picking this th- between these receivers as well. It's just, you know, there's no stability week to week. Right. Um, Rams, Jags. Uh, I, the, the Rams are I, I like the Rams, but the meat of their <laughs> schedule is here. And this one, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't want anything yeah. other than you have to play girly. This you is just a, girly. this is a nightmare for them. <laughs> these Jags yeah. defense. I am I am so one hundred percent sold on these guys. I think they're we, awesome. I'm so glad we were among the people that were like Jags defense this year. Yes. Do it. Um, Ramsey Bouye is just oh might be the I, I saw um, our former you know Sirius XM colleague Kay, you know Kay Adams mentioned on Good Morning football um like you know they might be the that's the reason they're atop the division i'm like yeah i pretty much agree with that uh yes yeah, it's, it's they're they're really carrying things and watkins and and not a good week for him again watkins has had some tough draws this year like des bryant kind of yep so uh, yeah this is uh, i mean on the other side the jags i mean you're not playing the receivers you're not playing it's weird this game we love the game there's real only the running backs are playable <laughs> for, for yeah. fantasy purposes I mean, maybe marquise Maybe Lee and Hearns, if you want to take the gamble. That's a um, huge gamble. It's a huge gamble, though. But yeah. if it's, you know, no Dez, no whatever, you know. Right. All right. But, but yeah, I mean, as, as fun of a real game as it might be, it's yeah. a horrible fantasy game. This is another prove it game of which team's actually kind of real. Right. So, yeah. All right, everybody, buying tickets can be complicated and confusing. There's a better way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek's the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every game all season long. Whether you're planning a day out with friends, searching for a last-minute deal, or buying a gift for a loved one, SeatGeek helps you find the best seats at the best prices, fully guaranteed. Nothing beats being there in person for the biggest plays of the year, and SeatGeek will get you closer to the action for a great value. Now, I've got the SeatGeek app on my phone. It's by far the easiest way I've found to shop for tickets. I can be anywhere, and with just a few taps, I can instantly find seats. I'm actually, my, my latest mission is once my son's Pop Warner football season's over, I have to go to an SEC football game. I think I'm, go- I think I'm looking at uh, University of Georgia sometime in November. Nice. That's what Big I'm... Big There you go. I'm excited about going down there. Um, and everybody, please, Eagle fans, do not use SeatGeek to buy tickets in Charlotte tonight to root against the Panthers, okay? <laughs> use SeatGeek next week. <laughs> All right. Um, SeatGeek saves you time and money by searching multiple ticket sites to compare prices and find amazing deals. And to get you the most bang for your buck, SeatGeek grades every ticket based on value to help you immediately identify the best seats to fit your budget. And if it doesn't end with sports, SeatGeek also has plenty of concert, comedy, and theater tickets available too. Best of all, new users get $20 off their first purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code ROTONFL today. That's promo code ROTONFL for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. See it live with SeatGeek. Right seat, right now. Right from your phone. Thanks a lot, Seeky. All right. Um, Steelers Chiefs. Is it mm. too simple to write off Ben Roethlisberger in a road game here? 
it, it seems simple. Maybe if you want to go like a DFS GPP lineup and go against the grain and have Roethlisberger, you know, last week's bum type of thing. I could definitely see that depending on what the price is. Um, Marcus Peters, another great corner that's going to hinder people. But, you know, it's Antonio Brown. We, we went over this last week against the Jaguars. Antonio Brown still got his. Yeah. And this secondary, for, 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 for as good as the pass rush is, is not as good as the Jaguars secondary, which I can't believe I'm saying that <laughs> 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 after all great. this time. Um, but, you know, I keep saying that if, if Peters doesn't follow, guys like Martavis Bryant and Smith Schuster could have decent games, you know, because there's a match of plays that he can go with there. Um, big Le'Veon Bell game because the Chiefs are still giving up points to running backs. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not that convinced that Big Ben is dead because I think this is just a better matchup for him, to be honest. Right. But if he had had a good game last week, we would be sitting here talking about his home road splits. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. And, and, but then now we're kind of going, all right, it's so – even though now he had a bad home game, everybody thinks he's completely finished. And everyone took those post-game comments way out of context for him. Yeah. Because if you read it, you think, oh, Ben Roethlisberger thinks he might not have it anymore. But you watched it and he kind of was – he was basically trying to get the heck out of there. Right. And answer, he's like, I don't know. What, what's wrong? I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I can't play. I don't know. What, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, am I well, done? It was almost like that. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of funny to watch, but as a journalist, uh, I was like a little irked by it, too. I'm like, dude, come on, just step up and answer them. I you know, know. I, I, after a game like that. But I'm wondering what what is he going to say? He's he's he's, he's got to be hurting, man. I mean, guy who oh, has been taking so many shots and then, you know, the Jaguars just, you know, peppered him. Right. You know, um, Justin, he, Justin, he's going to do that to him this time, though. So so yeah. other, on the Chiefs, I mean, the Steelers defense is like the, 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 the reason I could see the Steelers in this game. I mean, I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs, but I can – the Steeler defense is good enough to make this really interesting. I think I would take the points, so, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's fair. Was it four and a half? I think it's – it's around there. All right. It's, it's just on the border of being really, you know, attractive for that purpose, but I still think I will. Um, Tyreek Tyreek's doesn't have the easiest matchup here. No, not with, not with Burns, and I think Burns will be on him. Right. I don't know. Hopefully it's, oh, if it's Joe Hayden, then forget it, you know. <laughs> right. This uh, – <laughs> Point spread. He, sorry, over under here forty six. It's higher than I would th- would have expected. Yeah, I'd like to go under here. Well, the, the Kelsey injury is probably clouding right. things up. Yeah, this. I mean, I think this could be a you know a fourteen thirteen kind of situation. So I don't yeah, know. I'm not excited yeah. for fantasy wise. I'm not even excited. It's a, even the guys that you have to play, of which there are quite a few. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, not, I'm not happy about them. No, Hunt, Hunt, you're not happy about Hunt like, running I mean, back against them? I'm, I want to play him. I, I like yeah. the Steeler defense. And I and I, I sort of feel like this is a – after last week, this is a this could be a bit of a step-up game for the Steelers. That is like, yeah. oh, you know, backs against the wall. Everybody thinks we suck. True. So, but I mean, yeah, I mean, the four, the second Fortnite touchdown was just, you know, just trying to stop the clock, whatever. And right. And, and he just broke free. So, you know, the, the numbers are a bit skewed. I'll admit that. But I don't know. I still like – you know, I still think it's a top three. This week, maybe if not number one. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I have him. What was it second? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. These two, these two guys in the games, I'm not excited about. I have him as first and second at running back. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, two of the most guaranteed workloads in fantasy. So right. I mean, you know, Fournette playing the Rams, as good as he is, the Rams are pretty good too. So there's there's warts everywhere. Yeah. Um, Chargers Raiders. <laughs> so mm. I was looking at <laughs> rankings, and I'm looking at Jeff's. He has Amari Cooper at wide receiver 26. Can you believe this is where we are? Yeah, but it makes sense. I know. <laughs> um, I have him 24th, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, same yeah. deal. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Derek Carr's first game back, he's going to have to deal with that Bosa-Ingram tandem and two pretty good cornerbacks. Is Carr I mean, playing? I mean, he, he was he, – he practiced limited yesterday, right? It looks like he's on the, on the path to playing. Um, you know, and if he doesn't play, that's just even worse, you know. That look so is is Cooper. Are you are you looking at? Do you are you heavy on Cooper shares light? Well, I think I have him in one league. I have him in one NFFC best ball draft master draft champion, whatever you call it. Um, to, you know, round two, round three turn. I took him and I forget who else. Maybe maybe it was prior. But, uh, you know, great start for my receivers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking like, you know, the schedule coming up is, you know, uh, Chargers, Chiefs, Bills, Dolphins, Patriots. The Broncos, <laughs> Giants, Chiefs, Cowboys. I don't know. It could be a buy low. Uh, I'm sure people are wise to that. You know? Do you think so? I mean, is he a guy you're sort of sniffing around about? Yeah. I mean, in a couple of weeks where I need wide receiver help, I'm like, hmm, 
you know, okay. I, I've thrown out some offers. People haven't gotten responses, but All I'm right. like, yeah, C- Cooper could be, you know, that, that's like a, that's a real, real good, you know, get guy getting frustrated and just ditches him, you know, if he, right. You know, wants to get some immediate return for him. If you're in a good spot, you might even want to buy low for Cooper, you know, because it w- won't hurt you as much if you're losing, if you have re- trading from depth, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So, um, um, defense here. Hold on a second. So I want to go to the other side on Lynch. Mm-hmm. Um, the Charger rush defense, not so great. Mm-hmm. Is Lynch, are, are you thinking that this could be a bounce back for Lynch or are you, are you sour on him? No, I think it's a good week for him. Um, yeah, he's probably probably like a top twelve guy for me. I think right, um, and fifteen, so same same yeah. ballpark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Raiders' offensive line, you know, they can block. Lynch just hasn't been good at reading the blocks. Right. I think so. <laughs> I think he'll have an easier time this week of doing that. Okay. On the Chargers side, um, I mean, the Raider defense has been pretty leaky. Yep. Uh, Hunter Henry last week that was an encouraging, <laughs> not just a target wise, but snap count wise. Yeah, it was his high season high, I think. Yeah. Right? I mean, he kind of so, looked and went, maybe maybe the page is turning here. I, I'd I think be it is. scared about it a little, but I it, it seems like that's probably what's happening. Yeah. Um, you know, Antonio Gates, like, like we said earlier in the season, he got the touchdown record, Antonio Gates, and now kind of, you know, diverging paths of playing time. And I think Anthony Lynn is slowly realizing that Henry's actually a guy that can make plays. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Chargers is going to make a run here, I think. You think? Uh, I, don't know. I think they're on the upswing. I think they're on the upswing. Um, yeah, they couldn't go any, got any lower. Right. <laughs> Someone had to after that game last week. But, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll get to that later, I guess. And speaking um, of that opponent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to move on? You still want to do Chargers Raiders? You got any more? Um, I mean, Tyrell Williams seems to be, I think, I think he'll bounce back. Um, Keenan Allen, stud, I guess. PPR, especially. Um, right. Yeah, I don't know. Travis Benjamin, maybe, is, as a desperation play. Yeah. I'd rather not on that one. Yeah. Tyrell, right. I would. Yeah. Um, Giants Broncos again. I don't know how the I don't know how the Giants score <laughs> in this one. I mean, Roger Lewis is maybe the best. If Shepard, if I don't, I don't know, if Shepard's he's not well. looking like it. Shepard's no. looking doubtful. So, which is it, yeah. I mean, okay over <laughs> over under nine point five targets for Evan Ingram. Over, yeah, right. They have to. I think I ha- I think you have to. But then so, again, Ben McAdoo not one to adapt so easily. So, <laughs> so no, it, especially if they're losing twenty three to nothing. Right. They'll move him around. He'll he'll line up elsewhere. Um, I think yeah. PPR Ingram's outlook is really good for the coming weeks. So. And, and you know who else? PPR. You know who else? If if we think this is a blowout, which I, yeah, I can't imagine another I way. Where are you going? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got you got the the dark war injury. Gallman. Gallman's still the best runner right now. Right. Um. You know. But I think you're right. I think I think Dark was going to be on the, on the outside on this one because this, the game flow is not going to help him. Right. Okay. Um, other side of that one, I mean, usual suspect. I mean, great spot for CJ Anderson. Yeah, for think. sure. Um, yeah. You're playing the receivers. They, you know, they're boring. But you know, if we talk about the skinny route tree yeah. and all that with them, yeah, um, <laughs> the passing tree that the, you know they're the only guys who catch anything. Right. Um, uh, I guess that's it. Jamal Charles yeah. could he. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I mean, guess garbage time. I don't know. I don't want to play. Yeah. Him. I have outside. No. I have 40th ish, which means I don't want him. Yeah. So DFS, do you want to pick a tight end from here against these giants? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I like AJ Derby kind of man. I do. But, really? But it doesn't have the snap count, I think. So, right. Virgil Green's going to stay in there more for the blocking. Right. But maybe like you said, you oh. have to like a tight end against it. It's, it's always worth it. So it's always worth a look. Yeah, it's but you got to be really dire straits for that. <laughs> um, Colts and Titans. Mariota is still a maybe, but it looks better mm-hmm. this week. Um, last week with Castle in there, the Titans backfield tandem was very one sided all of a sudden. He's so weird. I mean, Why we, would we you thought it was a tandem? Them? And then Derrick Henry last week, they kind of went, nah, <sighs> such a such a such bad coaching. I mean, you think so? Yeah, you had they're, they're your two best players without Mariota. I think that's probably true. I mean, it, it, there's, a, there's an offense last year that just thrived on these guys. You know, to some degree, Henry chi- chiming in last year, not not to the degree that we all wanted him. If we speculated, but I don't know. There's there's that's a wasting wasting guys where you really could call for a situation like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's probably true. 
tandems are good. In real life, tandems are good. Yeah. And why, why not use them? I, okay, that's fair. Um, receiving-wise, I, yeah. I kind of would like to play Richard Matthews. In this yeah, one. I agree. I mean, the Colts, the, the Colts can't go. I mean, they're just bad. Yeah, I mean, Vontae Davis seems like a good, you know, burnt toast story this week. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> um, other side of this one, uh, Marlon Mack kind of worm, worked his way in on Gore last week, which made yeah. Gore's, you know, 3.6 average that's going to happen all the time look even less good. Yeah. I almost stashed Mack in two leagues. I didn't. And I'm paying for it now. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right before kickoff, I almost went, mm, you know. That could be a good one. And then right, if no. you if you own Mariota, are you if if you hear Friday afternoon, he's playing. Is he an in for you? Is he a yep, absolutely <sighs> I'm in, or is he a uh, what else do I have going on if I have a bench guy? It's more of what else do I have? If like if I have anybody below, I guess Jameis Winston okay. and Mariota, I think that's where where I go with Mariota. You know, like above a Simeon, above maybe even a Roethlisberger. Okay. You know, I guess, uh, I guess, especially Mario or Wentz. Yeah, it's not that. That's what I was worried you asked me. <laughs> um, I, I don't want to. Do you want to wait? That's the thing. I want to wait. Yeah, yeah, actually, with Wentz, you're right. I, I would rather saying. wait. No, you play, you play Wentz tonight. I saying. play Wentz. Sorry. Yes, I play Wentz tonight. You're right. Yeah. That, that's a dangerous game to play. Yeah. If you had to. Uh, uh, Mario or Carr? Mariota, if he's if he's active. Okay, me too. Okay, um, everybody, listeners to this podcast get a free ten day RotoWire trial. RotoWire dot slash pod. No credit card needed. That lets you check out nearly all the features on the site. Check it out now. RotoWire dot slash pod. Tim, um, you're going to do your pregame Sunday Facebook Live, right? What time? Yep, noon Eastern. And you guys can catch uh, John McKechnie uh, Thursday as we're recording this tonight. We'll be at six thirty Eastern, I believe. You can check the Facebook page for that. But you know, good good chance to get those last minute questions in. Uh, you know talk to somebody face to face kind of face to comment whatever <laughs> but uh yeah um tweeting 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 other than that um <laughs> so it'll be fun uh yeah hope you join us all right so so i have a tonight one of my things i do the i do a five minute spot every week on the panthers pregame show the radio nice. pregame show yeah. and uh my friend jim zoki is the host and he's an indians fan so Ooh. sunday cool. when i got on at ten thirty, at the very end he said Hey, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about Yankees Indians. Do we still have time to talk about it? And I basically called him a jerk and told him I was hanging up on the air. <laughs> well, tonight, you know what to do? A little different, don't you think? <laughs> you know what to do, John. I'm going to lead with this one. I don't <laughs> care what the people want to listen to on the Panthers pregame show. I'm totally going Yankees Indians right off the bat. Get it in, while you, while, before they cut you off, get exactly. it in there. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tim. Everybody, if you like this podcast, we'd appreciate it if you'd leave us reviews and ratings. You've been doing that a lot lately, and, and we really thank you for it. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Road to Our Fantasy Football Podcast, sponsored by Fanball. Uh, we'll be back on Friday. Derek Van Riper and I will wrap up the injury report and the news and all that stuff. So check back then. For Tim Heaney, I'm John Halpin. See you next time. <laughs>